Hi, I'm Sandra Madafra and I'm the founder of the Institute of Oneness Integration. I'm a holistic and spiritual trainer and mentor and I'm here today on the online prosperity show to show you how you can become aware of your full potential and live a limitless life. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the business and holistic coach, Sandra Medafi. Sandra, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Fantastic. Now, obviously, you'll be wondering why we've got Sandra on the show today. Um, we're always bringing in experts in their own realm so that they can help us either have a life that's of a happier existence or a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Right now, maybe I could ask you a question. You could be stuck in a rut, or maybe you just feel like you don't belong where you are, and you just can't find out a way um, you know, to your own happiness or to actually have a full life. And you probably tried everything, but you just can't see the light. And there's a lot of self-help articles, coaches, and other things that you could have looked at, and they keep urging you to pursue your dreams, but this only leaves you feeling further away from fulfillment and your dreams might still uh, be under construction or you haven't even figured out what your dreams are. Now, Sandra um, and her experience can actually help you to be the best version of yourself and to actually be in alignment with who you are and what you are meant to be through um, her coaching methods and also um, what she calls the oneness integration. Now, Sandra, you can tell I'm excited and you can tell I could go on and on, but why would I do that if you're here today? Tell us a little bit about your story and how you actually got started, um, you know, as a holistic coach. Okay. So I guess, I mean, I've been interested in the more metaphysical um, holistic type practices since I was a little girl. I had a grandmother who was very much into um, esoterical type things. So my mind was already open to that. And I always knew there's something else. Always knew there was something else, you know, and always sort of searching what else is there and always thinking there's got to be more to what I'm doing. And about seven years ago, um, things sort of took a... A 180 degrees turn because if it's 360 you go back to where you were and I didn't go back to where you were I ended up right down the bottom at a 180 degree um, turn and I began the search I began the search of what else is out there and it was really interesting because as I began that search the the first client I've ever had and I say it all the time was myself because the first person I had to look at was me and in, in doing that, I discovered um, all the things that were keeping me in an existence, not a life. And so I began the journey to find uh, modalities, to learn modalities, to find coaches. I started, I actually went on a spiritual search first and I started uh, doing things like Reiki and seeing um, very spiritual type um healers and then I realized that there was something missing and so then I went I began to go searching further and further and I started getting into the mind and became a hip clinical hypnotherapist and now realized that it's not about just one part of who we are it's not just about the spiritual it's not just about the, the mind it's not just about the emotional that we have to actually be able to integrate the whole the whole lot of who we are together um, so that every part of us works with the other part so that we can then step into our greatness. And I guess that's where it's brought me today. So that's why I called the business oneness integration. Absolutely. Absolutely. You do, um, you know, state a really big case there because a lot of us just leave everything to be an autopilot. And as you say that, um, you know, you, always were questioning that was was this uh, all there is you know mm -hmm. what i mean so would you say that your now situation is based on you actually listening to what your emotions were telling you 
of 100%. The, I believe, and, and I know there's a lot of different schools of thoughts here, but the emotions, I believe that our emotions are where we house everything about us because your, your body or your emotions, if there's something wrong, the first thing that will happen is you'll have a physical reaction to it, a kinesthetic reaction where, you know, you get a gut instinct. Everyone says, you know, I've got this gut instinct. Well, that's your emotion speaking to you. But we tend to push them away because one of them is, you know, you get told that you overreact or, you know, from little kids, we get told, you know, you're, you're overreacting or you're too sensitive. But in fact, that is your body or your unconscious mind because I believe that our unconscious mind is our body and there's a train of thought on that, um, which is a bit controversial, but I believe it's Dr. Joe Dispenza also believes this as well, that it, it tells us... Um, what we're what we're doing where we have to pay attention so if you have a physical reaction to something or an emotional reaction to something you you should be becoming aware and not pushing it away and whether it's a good emotional reaction or a what is considered bad i don't think there's any such thing as a bad bad emotional reaction but you know society does think that if you get angry it's not a good thing i don't believe in that i think if you're getting angry there's a reason for it. You need to have a look at what's going on for you and, and what it is. And it's not about the other person. It's about you. Absolutely. It's about your, your values, your beliefs, whatever's happening for you that has caused that reaction. So, yeah, so that's, that's, that's how I look at it. And, and being in touch with your emotions and allowing them to be expressed and allowing yourself to fully be in your emotion is actually what brings about the understanding of who you really are. Absolutely. We are always in pursuit, um, you know, of happiness. And um, half of the time we find that we usually allude our happiness to something or we, we think we need something else to be mm -hmm. happy. You know what I mean? Um, is this some, is this, um, is there a way that people can actually just make peace with um, the way they are and um, just go on and try and find the happiness without thinking it's going to come from or amount from something else outside of okay. us? Well, you'll never find anything outside of yourself. It, it, it will never come. Um, the, the only way that you can find happiness is to, to actually accept every single part of you. And that's the good parts the bad parts, the ugly parts, every part of you. If you accept every part of who you are and stop comparing yourself to people, you are who you are. And when you accept that, things just flow. And being able to just be at peace with your shadow, this is, this is one thing that I find that doesn't get spoken about a lot, and that's the shadow self. If you begin to accept the shadow self and to realise that, Nobody can make you happy except yourself. Nothing will bring you happiness unless you are happy with who you are. You can search till, you know, um, the cows come home, which is a, an Australian saying, but you will never find it because you have to be happy about what you have. And once you are happy with what you have and accept who you are, then you can take the next step to changing your life because then you're, you're looking more at solution-based um, advancements rather than getting caught into I'm not good enough I can't do that that person's doing that and I can't because we're limitless but it's our own thoughts that create us to think we're not good enough that then will create that that um, com comparison between people and then you're looking always outside yourself to find happiness but I'll tell you now from experience that nothing will bring you happiness except for finding it inside who you are and that comes from accepting yourself. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for that, um, you know, answer. Now, Sandra, you did mention uh, in one of your statements, till the cows come home or something, being an <laughs> yes. Australian, um, you know, statement. There's, there's a really big um, Australian thing that I have come to come across, the whole tall poppy syndrome. Um, oh, yes. It's something that probably nips people in the bud from fully expressing themselves to who they're fully capable of becoming. And, um, you know, I would think as a coach, you do find that um, as a yeah. limiting belief or as a limiting factor 
for people that you you seem to to help what, what's your comment to, to to that aspect okay um there is a very big tall poppy syndrome in australia and we we have a habit of cutting people down that are doing really well now what i'm going to say to people out there and it's really interesting because at the moment in my group i'm actually running um a challenge on the four agreements and we're on week two and week two of the four agreements is that don't take anything personally. And what that means is that if someone comes up and says to you, you're not good enough, whatever that might look like, you, you're, you're stupid, you're, um, you don't know what you're doing, it's a reflection of themselves. Because I always say to my, my students um, and my clients is that nobody can tell you something unless they already have a frame of reference for it. So if someone thinks that you're stupid, obviously that's triggering stupidity in them and they're seeing it. So because or else how would they know that you're stupid? So it's not about you. It never is about you, but it's up to us whether we accept or reject what someone says to us. So it's not about you when someone says something. It's about them. And if you, if you understand that and no one can also make you feel something that you don't already feel about yourself. So if someone says something to me and I react and I get triggered by it, well, then I obviously believe that about myself too because if I don't believe it, they can't trigger me. Absolutely. So absolutely. Accepting of self is absolutely number one. You have to accept yourself and you have to accept all of yourself. We're human. We're not meant to be perfect. We're meant to be unique. Absolutely. I read, um, <laughs> I read somewhere, Sandra Wade says, I think humans are the only people that uh, are self judgmental. There's never been a record or, you know, somebody heard a flower or a tree saying, Oh, my buck is too rough or my petals are not too exactly. bright. I'm not going to bloom this winter, you know, and it's only humans exactly. that sort of nip themselves in the bud. No, thank you so much for that. You have um, brought up, or you also have one of your coaching programs uh, known as the oneness um, integration. Can you just walk us through what that actually entails mm -hmm. and um, what, what that actually means for somebody who has never heard about it before? Okay. So what oneness integration is a, a program that I put my clients through and it begins with me needing to really understand the client back the front and inside out. I really put myself in their shoes. So it, it starts with a very comprehensive um, two and a half hours roughly of questioning of where I understand what their problem is and why um, they're in a, the situation that they're in, what it is that, that is holding them in, in that problem. Because you know, when you're in a problem, you can't see past it. So I need to understand the problem. I absolutely need to understand the problem. And once that happens, then I bring in um, the coaching process. And through the coaching process, we I combine lots of different modalities that I do. So not one single process is the same. Although I follow um, what seems to be a structured process, it actually isn't structured because everyone is completely different and once we i start to hypnotize people and start getting into the the unconscious mind and seeing what sort of things they're bringing up and what the limiting beliefs are what the negative emotions are from the past that we need to release it can go many different ways and although i begin with making sure that we release all the negative emotions and the limiting beliefs they need to be released first so that we can move ahead I also will bring in some spiritual practices as well. So we might do things like connecting into higher self um, because as I said, we need to, I need to balance a whole lot. So we do the mind stuff. We do the emotional stuff, which is the, uh, the, the unconscious mind is the realm of the emotions. And then we also bring the spirituality part into it. And I combine it all together. We run, usually run an eight week uh, program. Clients usually see me for approximately two hours a week. And we begin to just um, break down and break through everything that's holding them back so that at the end, they then create a compelling future and begin to have an awareness of where 
their past patterns, I guess, and their past experiences have actually brought them to where they are and how, you know, something that can happen to you as a child, you know, something as simple as going to a a shop and wanting, you know, a chocolate bar and mum saying, no, you're not having that now, uh, makes you think that you're not good enough or that you don't deserve to have things and then it just compounds over the years and then you get to adulthood and someone says something and you react to, oh, my God, they don't think I'm good enough and then it becomes a spiral. So we, we work on all that so that the client becomes really aware of these patterns. We get all the learnings from the unconscious mind so that we understand what we needed to learn from those things and then we begin to create a compelling future and um, create goals and I show people how to focus on the life that they want so that they can get it and let me tell you people that begin to understand this and know how the unconscious mind works and um, it works I, I, I liken the unconscious mind to Google search Whatever you put into Google search, you're going to find. So whatever you put into your unconscious mind, your unconscious mind is going to go and get it. And I often say that the conscious mind is our goal setter, the unconscious mind is our goal getter, and so you're not conscious of it. It just takes you there and you're not conscious. And I often quote Carl Jung and say that the, the this um, quote that he said, which was, until we make the unconscious conscious it will rule our life and we will call it fate and that's what we do we live in that unconscious state of becoming of not being aware of what we're doing and what we have in the unconscious mind and actually 95 percent of the choices that we make every day are unconscious so you're you're allowing things in your past that you absolutely do not know what you're holding there in the protection that your unconscious mind is holding you in, the patterns of protection, and you're allowing that to rule your life. But as soon as you begin to become aware, because all the unconscious mind wants to do is to protect you. It is the main prime directive of the unconscious mind. We're sitting here, we're breathing, you know, all our internal organs are working. It is there to, to protect us and to uh, make sure that everything functions right. So when it's holding the emotions, it will stop you from being hurt again. But in fact, it's it's doing that on past experiences, not in the now. So you need to become aware of those things so that you no longer react to those past things and you react in the moment and your choices are much more clearer. Absolutely. Wow, that was a beautiful answer there, uh, Sandra. But, you know, in, in, in all... Um, that you were saying, and especially on the whole chocolate uh, bit, I just was taken a little back um, when I was stopping my little girl from getting a chocolate bar from the shops and that would have happened. Um, would you then attribute um, a lot to our conditioning, uh, to the environment that we live in, and also maybe the media, even if um, we are no longer with our parents. The media is also just throwing in that um, unconscious stuff that you said, if you type into Google, you will get what you get. And if you're just watching uh, stuff that is not filtered uh, for your own good, uh, would you say that is also, you know, a, a detriment for people living their fullest or, you know, expressing Absolutely. themselves? Absolutely. The, the media thrives on fear. It absolutely thrives on fear. Um, so it, that's what it feeds you. It, it, you. You see it every day. You, you see, you know, when do you ever see or hear a, a really a feel-good story on the media? It, it thrives, the catch lines, you know, on magazines, they're just to get you in and, um, and, and it fri you know, you, you're constantly being bombarded. So that's where you're going. You, you you then get all these past experiences from when you've been growing up as a child where you've been listening to the, the news and you've been listening to all this fear for years and, of course, it, it stops you because you're scared to do things and then you, you hear other things that it does, you know, young, young girls are being constantly and even boys now bombarded with you need to have a particular figure and you need to look a certain way. So, of course, it's starting to create more and more of I'm not good enough in you. And the more you get caught in that I'm not good enough and the more 
you start hearing it, the more it, it, it leads you to that stuck place or that place where you're just not going to be able to be fulfilled because you believe you're not good enough. So the media has a lot, a lot to be, um, I don't know what's the word, they, they really need a lot to be accountable for, I think, and um, they sell headlines. It's money. It's all about money. And that's what it's, what's important to some people these days. Absolutely. Makes money. Absolutely. You do it. Now, all this is, is, is a whole lot to take in, you know, just in an episode. You do have a program that's coming up uh, uh, early December. Can you just uh, walk us through what you're going to be doing yep. and how it's all going to happen? Okay. So on the 8th of December, I'm holding an information session um, here in Melbourne in Preston. And it's a, from 9am to 1pm and we're, it's just going to be a very quick introduction to NLP. NLP is not only a process of, you know, learning tools and techniques to help others, but it's also a process of becoming, I would say, a, a bit of more of a free thinker because you begin to recognise um, in the media and politicians and how they all use it and so that you can start cutting through all the jargon and all the, the things that people throw at you. So you begin to see a um, little bit more about using your conscious mind to when you hear something on TV, you don't automatically let it drop into your unconscious. You go, hang on a minute, what's that about? Um, and with that, there's also going to be segments on timeline therapy, which is what, what I use to release lots of negative emotions and limiting beliefs from people. Also, the process of hypnosis and how it works and also um, how we put everything together to become a life coach. Because I am a trainer of NLP and can certify people to become practitioners in NLP, timeline therapy, hypnosis and coaching, um, I want to show people how they can use it not only for business um, in in their holistic practices, but also in their private lives at all as well. Because at the end of the day, any, anything that you use, um, even as a parent, you learn communication skills, and you learn, you know, one one of the things I laugh about is we we teach the five step selling process, and people say to me, "Why would I want to learn that? Because I'm not in business, I don't sell." But you know what? You you actually sell every day because when you're a parent, you actually need to sell to your kids that it's time to go to bed. And so you learn negotiating skills and things like that. So I'm going to show people um, it's only four hours, but in those four hours it will be jam-packed with value, things that you can take home. And one of the things that I love teaching people in um, my four-hour workshops, half-day workshops, is the what I call the anxiety model, which is part of timeline therapy, how you can beat anxiety with just a small meditation. Very, very small meditation. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to give people all those sorts of hints and tips and hopefully do a little bit of intervention on some people that come along. Um, something that we can do quick and show people how um, NLP and timeline therapy work. And hypnosis. I love hypnosis. I won't have anyone clucking like chooks, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Sandra, I mean, obviously, um, it, it takes those that have ears to have heard what you just dropped, um, you know, on the show today. But, you know, we live in a world where skeptics are still prevalent and they are actually perpetrating all the media stories that yes. uh, you're talking about and, um, you know, dicing people with fear and just throwing out uh, all this mediocrity out there, which is making people feel inadequate about themselves. Um, exactly. What would be your sort of last words to people when, you know, just telling them that you've watched this show, uh, it's time to, you know, take a grip of yourself, look at um, what's around you, look at how you present yourself, um, you know, in, 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 in public, mm -hmm. who you are. It's time to actually start, um, you know, taking control of your life so you can live um, a full life right there. Okay. So I guess the people that are going to get the most out of this are the people that are ready to do, to make that move. And mm -hmm. you know what? We, we have a saying, if it's not, broken don't fix it so i guess for anyone who is going to be skeptical or who's going to think that this doesn't work 
that's where they're at and I totally respect that. But for people that are stuck, for people that know there's something else, for people who want more, who don't just want to exist, who don't just want to go to work every day, come home, eat, watch tally, and just live on that borderline, you know, that grey zone, that comfort zone that we're all used to. I can say to you that you can step out of it, but it's up to you. I'm not going to say it's easy because it's not. It's very uncomfortable to step out of that comfort zone. It's very uncomfortable to go into something that you don't know, but it sure is worth it when you get there because you will never, ever look back on your life or look at life again through those eyes of what you're looking at now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't thank you enough, uh, Sandra, for your time. And for those that are watching, just stop making excuses and decide to take control of what you can. Stop playing offensive instead of, you know, the defensive life that you have been playing all along. This is your life. And once you have the power to change it, your world opens up. And there's people like Sandra that have open arms um, that are willing to help you discover who you are and actually maintain that person. Now, Sandra, yeah. thank you so much for your time can today. Can I just, sorry, I'm going to interrupt and say, can I just say one more thing? So, yeah. Um, just quickly, because you just mentioned um, something which just sparked something in me. We, we live in a world where we're given limits. Right. Okay. There are no limits. We limit ourselves. Because if you really, really set your mind to something, you focus on it, set your foundation, focus on it, and take action. That's the other thing. You've got to take action. That's why I say this isn't easy because you've got to do something about it. There is nothing you can't do. And I really want people to understand that. There is nothing a human can't do. Nothing. But you need to believe that. And I've seen people create some amazing lives. So if you want it, just go for it. Well, if you believe it, you can achieve it. And don't ever let anyone tell you any different, ever. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Sandra, I can't thank you enough, like I said, and um, especially you showing us how your oneness integration is actually a unique journey that you will be taking people on a rewarding and magical experience so they become aware of their true potential and how to make their world, um, you know, limitless. Now, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Very honored. Thank you for everything. Bye.